dear students today we are going to see the features of humerus radius and ulna humerus then radius and ulna first we will see the humerus okay humerus it is the bone of the arm see upper limb which is divided into arm forearm and a hand three parts okay so this is the bone of the arm now what are the features of this see this is what the humerus okay so this is anterior view of the humerus and this one is a posterior view of the humerus so humerus it's a long bone so you know doubt it's a long bone with three parts upper end then shaft lower end okay see upper end lower end and in between shaft first we will see the features of upper end upper end is having one rounded mass it is known as the head where see this rounded area not see this area this is what the head so head which directs medially backward and upward so i told you this is anterior view so here comes the midline of the body okay i imagine this is a midline of the body so this head which directs towards the midline okay and slightly upward and backward this is the head <clears throat> then this head which articulate with the glenoid fossa of the head um scapula to form the shoulder joint to articulate with the glenoid cavity of the scapula that we know what is meant by the glenoid cavity to form the shoulder joint then it forms one third of a sphere now the line separating the head from the rest of the upper end is known as one neck so what is meant by neck see here the this area now see the tip of the cursor see this line which separates this head from the remaining part of the upper end okay see here in this image the this one this line which separates this head from this upper end that line it is known as the neck so head neck then it is having two tubercles one is the lesser tubercle is an elevation on the anterior aspect of the upper end see this one this is a lesser tubercle this small elevation this one is a lesser tubercle like that here we can see another large elevation that you that one is a greater tubercle see here the, this is a greater tubercle so lesser tubercle then greater tubercle so head neck then lesser tubercle see here in this image the, this is the anatomical neck <coughs> now lesser tubercle greater tubercle now these two tubercles are separated by a groove that groove it is known as a inter tubercular sulcus or the bicipital groove so greater tubercle is also clearer than inter tubercular sulcus two tubercles are separated by a shallow groove that one is a inter tubercular sulcus then here the upper end which is connected to the shaft that area it is known as the surgical neck of the humerus so the surgical neck okay so these are the features of upper end what are they it is having one head then neck then lesser tubercle greater tubercle then inner tubercular sulcus or the bicipital groove then surgical neck okay now we are moving to the shaft shaft which is having three borders and three surfaces what are the three borders anterior border lateral border medial border see in the lower part this lateral border forms the supra condylar ridge <coughs> see this is the lateral border see in the here in the lower part this lateral border is known as supra lateral supra condylar ridge like that's medial border in the lower part it is known as what medial supra condylar ridge lateral border lateral supra condylar ridge medial border medial supra condylar ridge then in addition to that it is having one more border that one is a anterior border which comes here and in the lower part it is very clear that this one this is a anterior border so anterior border then lateral border then medial border those are the three borders now surfaces what are the three surfaces andro lateral surface andro medial surface posterior surface this andro lateral surface see here first we will identify See between this anterior border and this lateral border, 
here one small surface is there that one is a andro lateral surface like that here between the anterior border and the medial border that one is andro medial surface then this one between the medial border and the lateral border this is surface this is a posterior surface <coughs> so posterior surface then andro lateral surface andro medial surface here in the andro lateral surface there we are having a elevation it is known as a deltoid tuberosity deltoid tuberosity the posterior surface there we are having a groove it is a it is a groove for the radial nerve so it is known as a radial groove so posterior surface is having a groove known as the radial groove andro lateral surface is having one roughened elevation that is what deltoid tuberosity our deltoid muscle is inserting to this tuberosity so that's why it's known as deltoid tuberosity so that's all about the shaft so shaft it is having three borders and three surfaces but those surfaces are having two features one is a deltoid um, tuberosity and the other one is radial sulcus posterior surface is having the radial sulcus and the andro lateral surface is having the um, deltoid tuberosity now the lower end see lower end of the humerus forms the condyles expanded from side to side known as condyles it is having these condyles are having articular part and non-articular part first of all, what are the articular parts it is the capitulum and troplea capitulum it's a rounded projection which articulate with the head of the radius we have to identify see here this rounded or a barrel shaped part this is what the capitulum and this part this is what the troplea see this capitulum which articulate with the radius and this troclea which articulates with the alveolar okay so capitulum then troclea so two points are clear capital troclea is a fully shaped structure articulate with the troclear notch of the alveolar now the non articular part okay medial epicondyle it's a projection see along with the tibia uh, sorry along with the uh, femur i told you the medial epicondyle okay so here also see this projection this one is a medial epicondyle like that on the lateral side lateral epicondyle so medial and lateral epicondyle so you need not explain it again so medial epicondyle means it's a projection seen on the medial side lateral epicondyle same projection seen on the lateral side okay then lateral supracondylar ridge just now i told see this elevate this margin this is what the lateral supracondylar ridge like that above the uh, medial epicondyle there also we can see a ridge medial supracondylar ridge now above the trochlea there we are having a fossa that one is a coronoid fossa this depression is known as the, known as the coronoid fossa okay the coronoid process of the ulna rest there okay then above the capitulum there we are having another fossa this is a fossa for the radius so it is known as radial fossa so coronoid fossa then radial fossa these two fossa are seen in the anterior aspect and if you are moving to the posterior side there also we can see one fossa that one is a olecranon fossa for the olecranon process of the ulna this coronoid fossa for the coronoid process of the ulna radial fossa for the head of the radius now this fossa olecranon fossa for the olecranon process of the ulna so these are the non articular parts medial epicondyle lateral epicondyle above that two ridges lateral supracondylar ridge medial supracondylar ridge now coronoid fossa radial fossa olecranon fossa so these are the some of the important details of this humerus okay so study that humerus properly